Hello and welcome to my channel. I went to Liz Gaming. So we have finally come full circle for making another guide for our favorite upside down egghead, Kamisato Ayaka. Now, what do I mean by we've finally come full circle with this? Well, Kamisato Aika is, I believe, the first character I've ever made kind of a guide like this, like this really unscripted guide, but packed full of content and math for a specific character. And since then, those videos have done quite well on my YouTube channel, so I keep making more of them. And here we are to finally remake this one for Aika. So let's start off with her kit. So her kit has obviously normal attack, elemental skill, and burst, and she also has a unique dash. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on her dash, but it's clunky, it gets stuck on stuff, and you can't pivot as quickly, as well as the fact that once you release the dash key, you cannot adjust your trajectory anymore, and you're committed to that. And you can't cancel out of that ending lag with anything. You can't swap characters during it, you can't do anything, right? So just do keep that in mind that it makes you a bit vulnerable. And when the dash actually hits an enemy, you get an 18% cryo bonus from her passive right here. And it also refunds you a bit of stamina as well, so that way you are not too stamina negative when you spam her dash attacks. Now, also importantly is that when you use her dash, it infuses her normal attacks with cryo for five seconds. And during that five second infusion, you can generally squeeze in um, an N3 jump and then an N3 charge attack just like that. Uh, well, okay, two N3 charge attacks, but you can jump cancel one and then dash cancel the other. So for Aika's normal attacks or basic attacks, it's recommended to jump cancel the charge attack. Here you can see that by jump canceling it, you can recover much more quickly. And there you can see I had three infused charge attacks and the last one didn't quite come out. So in other words, you should probably do three. Well, you know, <laughs> if you don't jump cancel it too early and then do a dash cancel to re-infuse her basic attacks. So that's just kind of the general simple rotation for her normal attacks as well as her charge attacks. And when it comes to, you know, the different variations like N4 charge attack versus N3 charge attack versus N1 charge attack, they all do very similar amounts of DPS, I believe, but the charge attack has some very nice hitbox properties and stuff like that. So oftentimes I find myself spamming the charge attack a lot. Now, in terms of the damage, you know, her, her normal attacks are actually pretty solid and quite reliable. They do add up, you know, even though the multipliers themselves aren't too big, um, they do make up a substantial portion of a free-to-play or Constellation Zero Ayaka's damage. So next, let's talk about her elemental skill. This one is pretty straightforward, but when you cast it, it's a radial thing fairly large around her and it buffs her basic attack damage by 30% thanks to this passive. This passive right here buffs it for 30% for six seconds and it works even if you don't hit an enemy with it, which is very nice to know. And when you do hit an enemy with it, it generates four to five particles, 50% chance to generate four, 50% chance to generate five. So it generates a lot of particles and it has a 10 second cooldown. So a lot of particles per second as well. It's fairly quick as well. You can dash cancel, um, which is probably, uh, which is often recommended depending on your rotation. So you can dash cancel like that. And you can do, you know, you can just obviously just go straight into your burst as well. Now, speaking of which, you can even use her elemental skill and then burst immediately and you catch the particles. Or you can even use her elemental skill, dash, N1, and then burst, and you'll still catch the particles even like that. Which is actually pretty impressive with how fast, um, you know, everything comes out in that sense. Speaking of her elemental burst, this is really what makes Ayaka as powerful as she is. The multipliers are very nice and because it hits 19 times for the cutting damage and one time for the bloom damage. In total, we had 20 entire hits for Ayaka's burst. It lasts five seconds and it takes 1.5 seconds to cast. So in other words, you want to dedicate roughly 6.5 seconds of when the enemy is kind of rooted or in a place that you want them to be for Ayaka's burst to first come out and then to hit the enemy. And her burst at level 10 does 4,143.87% total skilled multiplier damage, which is massive. Also, everything in her kit, her normal attacks, her elemental skill, her dash, when it applies cryo, as well as her burst, all have standard ICD, and their ICDs are all independent of each other. So this makes Aika an extremely good cryo applicator, especially against things like the Abyss, Hydro Abyss Lectors, or whatever they're called as well as the Electro Abyss tall guys. So she's very good at breaking elemental shields 
Okay, so I'll give a quick demonstration of a typical just Ayaka rotation with the mist splitters or forged in this case. So you can dash in, use her LMB, and then uh, elemental skill, and now you can just do her stuff. And there you go. So just a quick rough idea of some example rotations that you can do with uh, just Ayaka. Now, in terms of talent priority, it's pretty straightforward, but basically you want to prioritize her elemental burst. You want to crown this thing as soon as possible. This thing does 4,000% skill damage, like I mentioned. Then you probably want to level up her normal attacks next, as they do make up a reasonable amount of damage if you keep Ayaka on field. And finally, after that, you can level up her elemental skill when you have the chance. So next, let's finally talk about her artifacts. Now, there's a pretty <laughs> obvious choice for Ayaka. It is the Blizzard Strayer four-piece set. This artifact set provides 40% crit rate against frozen enemies, 20% crit rate against enemies with cryo on them, and finally, it applies the 15% cryo damage bonus with the two-piece set bonus. And then if you slap in cryo resonance as well, then you have 55% free crit rate. So as such, Building Ayaka's crit rate stat is actually very easy with the Blizzard Strayer set. And for the baseline for this chart, we have the Blizzard Strayer hitting a frozen enemy as the baseline. Once we hit an enemy that can only be cryo-able, for example, bosses like the Primo Geovishap that cannot be frozen, then we do have a substantial DPS loss of around 11% because we are losing 20% crit rate in that situation. And finally, against an enemy that cannot be cryoed at all, then you're left with only the two-piece set bonus, which is plus 15% cryo damage. And against these enemies, you know, this unfortunately artifact set is not quite that great. And when does that happen, for example, against Electro Lava Trolls, which have the Electro Shield where you cannot apply cryo to them, as well as Electro Slimes. Um, and I'm sure there are other enemies that, you know, I'm not recalling off the top of my head, like the cubes, right? I think some of the cubes you cannot apply cryo. You guys get the point, right? So there are a few enemies here and there where you cannot apply cryo to, and therefore this artifact set is not that great. Now, Aika does have another problem when it comes to her artifact building capabilities, in that she has a problem with over crit. So what that means is that any crit rate over 100% is completely wasted. Now for my Aika currently, she has 46% crit rate. So what this means is that when an enemy is frozen with cryo resonance, I get plus 55% crit rate. So therefore my Aika has 101.6% total crit rate against a frozen enemy. And as such, 1.6% crit rate ends up being wasted stat, where ideally you'd want to shuffle it into either attack, crit damage, or energy recharge. But of course, you know, this is close enough and it's actually very little wasted stats in this case. Now with all that in mind, it's actually worth considering other artifact sets for Aika. And for example, one other artifact set that's worth considering is actually the Emblem of Severed Fates. And why is this? The Emblem of Severed Fate is actually a very solid artifact choice against non-cryable enemies. And here you can see that with the four-piece Blizzard Strayer, Ayaka is only doing about 72% of the baseline in this chart. Whereas for the four-piece Emblem of Sever Fate, Ayaka's Elemental Burst is doing nearly 81% damage. And of course, the Emblem of Sever Fate has the added bonus of having more energy recharge as well for better burst uptime. So there are situations and, you know, a few enemy types where you would want to focus more on, for example, the Emblem of Sever Fate's bonuses over the Blizzard Strayer. But do keep in mind that, honestly, the amount of enemies that cannot be frozen or cryoed even are fairly few and far between. So when it comes to purely farming for artifacts for Ayaka, I actually highly, highly recommend just going for the Blizzard Strayer and not worrying too much about enemies that cannot be cryoed and or frozen. In that sense, even though the Emblem of Sever Fates is good against those specific enemy types, it's not something I recommend spending resin on for Ayaka specifically. But of course that dungeon's amazing. And if you already have a good Emblem of Sever Fates and you're struggling against an Electro Lava Churl, then consider swapping to the Emblem of Sever Fates. But otherwise, you guys get the idea. Now, of course, you can always settle on, for example, um, two-piece set combinations, like with any character, Ayaka's no different. But again, with those types of things, you know, unless you have remarkable substats on those and terrible substats on your Blizzard Strayer set, then it's not something I would recommend for Aika. So in terms of the stats for the artifacts, it's pretty expected. You want attack percent for the timepiece. Now you can consider an energy recharge timepiece depending on the situation. 
Goblet, you really want to cryo damage Goblet, and finally for the Circlet, you want to crit damage Circlet. Now you can consider an attack percent Circlet as kind of a stopgap, but you definitely want to push that crit damage ratio eventually as much as you can. So, you know, target a crit damage Circlet. In terms of substats, of course, it's the expected crit damage first and then crit rate as a second priority to hopefully not over crit, but of course that depends on the situation and what type of enemies you fight, whether they can be frozen or not. And next you want the obvious attack percent and finally after that some energy recharge. Now, energy recharge is a touchy subject, but in my opinion for energy recharge, if you do enough damage and you one shot everything with your burst, why not build more energy recharge on your Ayaka? But of course, if you need to push damage, you want more um, attack. Now, ultimately though, it also depends on what enemies you fight, right? Some enemies drop more energy ores, but generally speaking, I personally find about 120 to 130 percent energy recharge to be enough, especially with a second cryo character on your team. So next, let's talk about her weapons. This is pretty straightforward. Obviously, the Mist Splitters Reforged is going to be the best in slot weapon option for her. It provides up to 40% elemental damage bonus when you have Refinement 1 Mist Splitter and 80% with, uh, with, for example, the Const or Refinement 5 Mist Splitters Reforged. So the Mist Splitters Reforged with three stacks will be the baseline, and I am giving this one a clear 5 slime rating out of 5 slimes. Now, when it comes to the other weapon options for Ayaka, unfortunately, they all have their issues. And both the Huron Gepaku as well as the Primordial Jade Cutter have huge issues with over crit in which they provide way too much crit rate for Aika. And let's actually take a look at those weapons. So we have the Huron Gepaku, which has 33.1% crit rate. So now you have 93% crit rate. In other words, you only have room for 7% crit rate on your substats and your artifacts. And that is, you know, obviously pretty impractical. And the Jade Cutter is even worse. You actually over crit immediately with this weapon without any crit substats. So do keep that in mind that it's very easy to over crit. So the next weapon to talk about is the Summit Shaper, which I don't even have, but here's a picture of it. Summit Shaper provides a really high amount of attack stat, which is nice in certain situations, especially with Ayaka, since you don't typically run her with Bennett. Even with that being the case, it's really annoying to build five stacks with the Summit Shaper before you use her Elemental Burst. And finally, you need to run Ayaka with a Shielder in order to draw out the full potential of the Summit Shaper, which is honestly very restrictive because you generally don't want Zhongli and Diona is not even the best teammate for Ayaka nowadays. Although Diona is still a great teammate for Ayaka, but we'll get into that later. Next, we have the Aquila Favonia. Aquila Favonia is just a solid stat stick with almost no caveats. But at the same time, you know, it does less damage than the Summit Shaper does. The Aquila Favonia, which let me click on it for you, it has physical damage as a substat, which is not useful for Ayaka. But despite all that, it's still a good stat stick, like I said, and it deserves a 2.5 slime at a five slime rating. Next we have the Skyward Blade. Now the Skyward Blade does do significantly less damage, especially on the Elemental Burst, but it does have high energy regen and it does reasonable amounts of basic attack damage. So because of the quality of life as well as the um, reasonable basic attack damage, I'm also giving this a 2.5 slime out of five slime rating, same as the Aquila Favonia. Honestly, both of these weapons can work on Ayaka, um, but you know, still obviously you know, they're getting two and a half slime rating out of five slime, right? It's that big of a gap between these and the Mist Splitters Reforged. So the next weapon is probably one of the two best free to play options for Ayaka and it is the Black Cliff Longsword. Now the Black Cliff Longsword I'm sure you're familiar with by now but it has the issue of its kill stacks being very situational. In Ayaka's case because she usually doesn't kill stuff before she uses her elemental burst this means that you know her burst is not going to be able to get the juicy attack buffs unless you have the second burst within 30 seconds of you know the first burst killing three enemies. And in my opinion I guess arguably a better weapon but you you know, it's very debatable, is the Aminoma Kagayuchi. Aminoma Kagayuchi provides a good amount of attack, but also importantly, it provides a lot of energy recharge. This energy recharge is not explicitly obvious, but basically use an elemental skill, and then when you use her elemental burst, she gains 12 energy per elemental skill that she casted prior to using the elemental burst. But you can stack it three times, so you can use three of her elemental skills, and then you gain 36 entire energy back at refinement five for free just by using her elemental burst. So as well, aesthetically, this weapon looks amazing on Ayaka. 
you know, it's very fitting this uh, katana design for, you know, Ayaka's kind of a, I guess, samurai feel, right? Like, that's kind of the aesthetic that she's got going for her. Personally, if I were to choose between these two weapons, um, I would choose the Amino Makagayuchi, but do keep in mind that a refinement 5 Black Lift Longsword with three kill stacks does quite a lot of damage. You know, we're talking nearly 94% of the damage that a refinement 1 Mist Blazer Forge, but do keep in mind that his refinement 5 Black Cliff with three kill stacks, which is very situational. So yeah, personally, I'm an Omikageuchi. Um, me, I prefer it just slightly over the Black Cliff. As for other weapons, you know, we're starting to get into not really recommended weapons, but the Black Sword is a usable weapon. It suffers from over crit, just like the other web, uh, swords with crit rate substat. And after this, you know, I wouldn't really recommend any of these other weapons. All right, next let's talk about Ayaka's constellations. The baseline for this chart is going to be the Refinement 1 Mist Splitters with three stacks, and we can see that this upgrading from a Black Cliff Longsword to the Refinement 1 Mist Splitters Reforged gives Ayaka a 37% damage boost, which is absolutely colossal. So Constellation 1, you know, this one is, <laughs> honestly, you can write this one off, but when you hit enemies with normal charge attacks, there's 50% chance of decreasing the cooldown of her elemental skill by 0.3 seconds. Not only is it RNG, but it's also, you know, not that impactful. Generally speaking, when you're spamming her basic attacks, as the lowest really her elemental skill cooldown gets to is about seven seconds, but most of the time you don't spend that entire time just smacking enemies with Ayaka's elemental skill. You know, you rotate your teammates to do stuff, blah, 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 right? So uh, on average, I'd say, you know, you have eight to nine second cooldown on her elemental skill because of her constellation one. And I'm giving this one a one slime out of five slime rating because it's just not recommended. If all you can get is her constellation one, it's not gonna make a big difference. But her Constellation 2, on the other hand, is huge. And this one adds two smaller bursts on the left and right side. And admittingly, both of them, it, it is difficult for both of them to hit the same enemy. And, you know, it's really applicable against very large enemies or a group of clumped up enemies. Then the two smaller bursts tend to stay in place and hit those enemies. But with all that in mind, each one does 20% of the damage of the original burst does. So if both of them can connect, we're talking 40% more damage for elemental burst. But that's not all because it also applies triple the amount of cryo. And that is huge because it allows even characters like Hu Tao to melt every single one of her charge attacks during those five seconds of Ayaka's burst. You can melt Yomiya's arrows, you can melt a ton of Klee's attacks, you can melt all of Deluxe's attacks during those five seconds. And you know, that is a huge, huge uh, damage boost. And it even gives Ayaka some ability to support her team as well. And also it destroys elemental shields way faster, right? Because you have three times the amount of cryo applying. So if you manage to land all three of them on, for example, two Abyss Hydro guys uh, grouped up together, they're going to die in no time at all. And therefore I'm giving this a five slime out of five slime rating, even though it is difficult to hit enemies with both the small Qs. When you do hit them, it is amazingly good. Next is Constellation 3, which is just a straightforward plus three levels to her elemental burst. And like most of these, they increase from level 10 to 13 by about 18% additional damage. And, you know, this is just more damage on her already broken elemental burst. And it's on top of that, it's multiplicative with the previous one. So as such, I'm giving this, even though it's only an 18% gain in comparison to Constellation 3, I'm still giving this a 5 slime out of 5 slime rating. Any damage you tack on top of Aika's elemental burst is huge. And by Constellation 3, we can see that assuming the two small bursts from her Constellation 2 are hitting the enemy, Ayaka's already doing 65% more damage than a Constellation Zero Ayaka. So her Constellation 4 is another amazing Constellation, but basically it, when her Elemental Burst hits something, it decreases their defense by 30% for 6 seconds. And this increases the damage on average against a level 90 monster by 18%. And it's another different multiplier and it's multiplicative with everything else. So as such, this one is also getting a 5 slime out of 5 slime rating. And this also actually funnily makes Ayaka the best cryo damage amplifier for many teams. Next is Ayaka's Constellation 5. Now this one increases her elemental skill talent level by 3, 18% to her elemental skill damage. I'm just giving this a 1 slime out of 5 slime rating because you don't get this constellation for the sake of this constellation. You get this constellation for the sake of her Constellation 6. Now her Constellation 6 is a bit nuanced. Her Constellation 6 adds 298% bonus damage to her charge attacks and it happens once every 10 seconds. In terms of her overall DPS, this really doesn't add that much if it's just Ayaka in a vacuum. So this constellation by itself, I would personally give this a three and a half slime out of five slime rating. However, with Shenhe, this 
immediately goes up to a 5 slime at a 5 slime rating. And even more bonus, you know, if you have Constellation 6 Shenhe especially, but heck, even Constellation 2 Shenhe, or, you know, even just Constellation 0 Shenhe, will skyrocket the damage of her charge attacks. Because Shenhe's Icy Quills is multiplied by this bonus damage multiplier, so it is super easy to do 120,000 damage charge attacks with Ayaka with Shenhe, which is absolutely out of this. Oh, 120,000 damage per tick, right? So obviously Ayaka's charge attack has three ticks, so we're talking over 300,000 damage just from an Ayaka charge attack with no energy requirements at all, which is absolutely crazy. It makes Ayaka into one of the most broken characters in this entire game. And last but not least, we can add on the Refinement 5 Mist Splitters Reforged, and this adds another 18% damage on top of, you know, Ayaka's uh, Constellation 6. Now, of course, you know, in a full team situation, this is diminished a little bit, but for the Primo Gem value, you know, it's not great, but at the same time, this will also just, you know, increase Ayaka's burst damage and charge attack damage, as well as C6 Shenhe's Icy Cool damage. So this is still a 5 slime at a 5 slime rating. Ooh, okay, we can finally talk about um, Aika's teams. And here we have just the overall best team for Aika. It's unfortunately all signature or, you know, limited banner five stars. We have Aika Kokomi, uh, Kazuha Shenhe. The rotation is quick. It's also extremely powerful and overpowered. You can, I guess I, I guess I can give a quick demonstration of it. But basically you open up with Shenhe, E, Q, Kazuha, Q, and then um, Kokomi like this. And then you can just Ayaka burst, and then everything will just instantly die. So yeah, that's the standard rotation for it. Very easy, very straightforward to do. Freezes everything, and you know, it's just death. In terms of the teammates builds, Kokomi is pretty straightforward. You have the Thrilling Tails, as well as the Tenacity of the Millilith. For Kazuha, you have the Viridescent Veneer, as well as the Freedom Sworn or Iron Sting. Finally, Shenhe, Calamity Queller, or you know, other pull arms and you just have as much attack as possible. This team has been setting tons of world records and it's just been dumpstering everything ever since Shen He's release. Assuming you don't have that team, which you know I'm certain a lot of you free-to-play players don't, essentially this is very flexible at this point. You can substitute Kokomi with any Hydro character, but let's start with Mona. Let's say you have Mona. In this case, you have no healer. So it's highly recommended to slot a healer for your third or fourth slot. So let's say you don't have Shenhe, then the most obvious answer would be Diona in this case. And finally, you have Kazuha, which you can replace with, you know, Venti or Sucrose. And even, even situationally with the previous team, Venti is better depending on, you know, what kind of crowd control you need. But for example, you can use um, Sucrose. You can use Jean, you can use Sayu, but literally any animal character here um, is substitutable. Any Hydro character here, even Barbara is usable, but the rotations with Barbara get a little bit, a little bit awkward in my opinion. Yeah, actually it's not too bad, really depends. And finally, you can even use Hydro character, you know, any Hydro character, but just do keep in mind that if you're not using Barbara or Kokomi, then you do need healer in one of the third or fourth slots. And speaking of which, let's just, you know, uh, be clear, you can use Xingqiu as well, because if you use Ayaka's normal attacks interspersed, you can obviously activate Xingqiu's water swords. Now, one character I don't really recommend, honestly, though, is Child. I would say he's probably the least recommended out of the Hydro characters. And finally, um, Ayato's not bad, but at the same time, they kind of have redundant roles because Ayaka's on-field damage is not bad, but of course Ayato's burst lasts 18 seconds and applies Hydro in a very large AoE, so it is a very good option for freezing the enemy. Okay, so there you go. I think that's a pretty reasonable update video, update guide video for Ayaka. Um, let me know if you actually learned anything new in this video or if it's just kind of a good review to just confirm what you already knew. And yeah, that pretty much sums it up. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.